English? On the menu today is abalone with lemongrass. It's Friday, and that's Asian cuisine day. Two teachers are explaining how this delicacy is prepared. The students are budding chefs. The Academy of Culinary Arts Cambodia was founded by Swiss-born social entrepreneur Pierre Tami. I've been in Cambodia for 27 years. I've been running a number of social enterprises in the food and beverage, a number of restaurants, a, a large catering business. And we see, like everybody else, we cannot invest more and do more or even create more jobs because the bottleneck is skills. Five hands inside. The school in Phnom Penh opened its doors in April. Financial aid is available to students from poor families, such as 23-year-old Mao Davin. My parents died when I was 11. Then I went to live with my aunt. She has five children, so I had to look after my brothers. Now I'm here, training to be a chef. Learning basics, such as how to fillet a fish, which knife should be used, and even where to leave it when the job's done. Never leave your knife on the table, it's yeah. dangerous. Uh, I mean, on the board, you leave on the table. The rules and techniques are new to many students. Italian cuisine, for example, pasta and so on. They can't do that yet. They don't know how to prepare it and steam and roast Italian style. So it's a major challenge. Opening the school was a labor of love for Pierre Tami. He's confident that a solid chef's training will be of massive benefit to young Cambodians. Hardly any chefs in the country are officially qualified. He's hoping the school will expand, but there are many hurdles to clear. Sometimes we find pipes, the wrong size, the wrong height. We find the electrical points that don't work, so it's, uh, it's very uh, time-consuming. So we have to be very patient. Pierre Tami has a lot of patience and a lot of experience here in Cambodia. The school is located in the center of Phnom Penh. Uh, the tower, the Watanak Tower, stands as a, as a sign that uh, Cambodia has developed, has come a long way. In recent years, Cambodia has seen strong economic growth of some 7% annually. It's a young country, but there's little social security and young people are expected to help support their parents. If they have a qualification, they're more likely to get a job. Caviar? Like this one, look. Caviar. Oh, okay. Caviar, right? It's very expensive. It's one of the most expensive food in the world. A training program like this, that combines theory and practice and even has an international dimension to it, is a novelty in Cambodia. Any chef, Michelin star or, or uh, Western chef or from Tokyo or so Singapore, when he comes here to show uh, cooking, to do demonstration, will find everything that he has back home. So we've equipped it with the latest of technology from uh, a steamer to induction to sous vide to everything that modern kitchen would have anywhere in the world. He's not the only one dreaming big. 20-year-old Chum Sok Chea wants to do his family proud. Why does he want to become a chef? My biggest dream is to become a famous chef one day and to run my own business. What I'd really like to do most is open a Cambodian restaurant, either in the U.S. or in Cambodia. Tami hopes to have 100 trainees by September. When I hear the kids, why they came, and they tell me, I want to start a business, I, I dream of a career in the culinary, and finally I can get a good certificate that allow me to work in five stars hotel, that excites me a lot because these people are passionate and they have a dream, like I also have a dream. Without a dream, we don't do anything in this life. 
The school would never have opened without donations from a number of Swiss firms. But in the long run, it's supposed to pay for itself. Although there'll be some grant holders, the rest of the students pay 3,000 US dollars per semester. And the training takes two years. And all of them have to learn to tidy up after themselves.